Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. We're so glad each and every one of you have come to be in service with us tonight. And I, I want to I want to say to this couple in the back row here, I told you, I warned you, if you were here three times, we were just going to claim you as family. So we want you to know how much we appreciate you all being with us tonight. God bless you. Thank you for being here. And all these beautiful faces. Just take a second and look around at all these beautiful faces that are here. Look at that smile Brother Denny's giving. My my Lord, have mercy. That's what I'm... <laughs> and both Denny's. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? You know, we talk about this a lot, but I'll tell you, there's nothing like coming together with God's people and experiencing the power of the presence of the Lord. Uh, there have been multiple times, if, I, I just, if I'm transparent, I mean, multiple times that I've come to church and I'd rather be sitting on my couch, or at least I think I would, eating a bag of chips, just vegging out. But you get here, you're tired, you're hungry, you're, you're worn down, whatever it is, and people just begin to praise or smile. And before too long, you're encouraged and you're excited. And I, I'll tell you what, it's so good to see you all tonight. God bless you. I can't tell you what it does for my heart to see all of you come in and ready and willing to worship the name of the Lord. All of our folks that are on Facebook tonight, let's give our, our, our folks that are on Facebook a hand tonight. Welcome them to the service. We love you and appreciate you being in service with us tonight and are so thankful that you've been faithful uh, in your participation in our Wednesday night services as well. We, we, we're getting uh, notes, messages from people all across the United States that are tuning in to watch and take part of our services and the functions that we have going on at Landmark. We are so thankful that God has opened this avenue for us and uh, believe that God is doing a great work on the other side of that camera. Amen? Amen. Amen. As is customary, we want to go to the Lord in prayer uh, tonight. Uh, we want to continue to remember we've got some regulars, some folks that have been on our prayer list for a number of, of weeks, but we want to continue to pray for them. God's doing some great works there. Uh, but we just want to ask and pray that he'll just continue to do it. We need to remember Vicki and Al Nash and Diane. Do we have any updates on Diane at all? Sis? Okay. We're going to remember her tonight and just believe that God's going to do uh, a great work. Uh, we also needed to remember uh, a lady by the name of Sarah Vicki, Al Nash, Diane, and Sarah all are dealing with cancer. Uh, the last word that I heard on Sarah is that she is in uh, extremely poor condition. Uh, we, we actually anointed a prayer cloth after service on Sunday and uh, have sent that out to her in faith, believing that God's going to do a work. Amen. So we want to lift her up again tonight. So thankful for the move of God in Brandy's life. She's a regular on our prayer list just believing that God's going to take care of all of that stuff and that she's not far away from just having complete relief uh, from the issues caused in that accident. Uh, we also want to continue to remember Stephanie. Uh, this is Brother Denny Robinson's other daughter. Uh, she's seven months pregnant, and uh, there are some complications there with her health, some things that she deals with, and we want to pray that God would protect her and the child. Amen. Um, we also want to remember Laura, which is um, Sister Cheryl's aunt, and um, I, she's doing better. Uh, we're thankful for that. She went to see the doctor. Heart's back under control. I heard you talking about that to Brother Chris tonight. Uh, her, her lungs are, are, are working well. And so God is a prayer answering God. Amen? But we want to pray that God will just finish the work that, uh, that he started there. Uh, also, uh, Brandon Pendergrass, I, I, got, I had an update uh, on him talking to some friends of mine this afternoon. Uh, he is doing a little better. He's still on a ventilator. Uh, from what I understand, instead of it being at 100%, just supplying everything that's going into his lungs, uh, they've been able to knock that down to 50%. Now, what I was told, though, is that they've had multiple setbacks, you know, reducing that, uh, the, the dependency on the ventilator. Uh, and then for whatever reason, he bottoms out, and they have to, you know, they have to re-engage some things. But we want to pray that this is a turning point. He's a young man. He's only 29 years old, has a young family, and uh, just battling this disease of COVID. We want to pray that God would heal him. Uh, we also want to remember Doris Schlag. I don't have an update on her, but the last I heard, she wasn't doing well, also battling with COVID. Uh, David Pulley, uh, you may have seen on the, the uh, church uh, members page, uh, he's battling with some stuff in his lungs. It is not COVID, 
uh, but he's battling with some stuff in his lungs, and we want to remember him tonight as well. Another regular, John Gieselman, this is uh, Sister John, his dad, uh, battling with all kinds of things in his body. We're just believing that God is, is doing a work, and he's going to complete a work. Amen? Uh, we need to remember Jan. Um, Jan is a friend of Jason and Ashley Busy, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that if, if we talked about it, you would know who they are. They're here uh, quite often on Sundays, uh, but uh, this, this friend's having issues with her heart. The doctors can't seem to figure out what it is. Uh, but they're very concerned. So we want to lift up Jan tonight. And then we also want to lift up, lift up Ron Houseworth. He has a number of issues with his health uh, that he's been dealing with. And we just want to pray. He, he's, he's no foreigner to uh, what happens in the presence and the power of God. He understands all of this. And uh, I'll tell you what I would really like for us to do. When we get to where we're corporately praying for Ron tonight, uh, when you hear me mention his name, if you would just focus on that with us. And let, let's, let's just cry out together as one voice and in faith believing, believe that when we crawl out his name, when we lift his name up, that the power of God's going to go to his home and it's going to do mighty things in him. Can we believe that together tonight? Do we have any unspoken requests? Anybody have an unspoken request tonight? Would you lift your hand up real high? All kinds of unspoken. Lift it up real high just for a second. Now take a look around. And find somebody, I think everybody here knows everybody, find somebody that you're going to agree with tonight that you're going to pray and help them believe that God's going to do a work in their need, in their life. Amen? And, and, and also tonight, I want us to pray for patience. I know that we're, we're, you know, when you look at the world, especially at the United States right now, we've talked about this, there's a lot of things happening there's a lot of, 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 of spirits that are out there. there are a lot of, there's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of angst. I, I want to compliment this congregation and this group of believers on your response to the, the current climate, dealing with the COVID crisis, dealing with the political climate, and all of those things. I want to tell you how much I appreciate that. You are an example, and God is going to use you in spite of how everything turns out. But I want us to pray for patience. Because I think the best thing that we can have right now is patience with one another, patience with our neighbors, patience with our friends, and uh, just believe that God is going to perform his will. Amen? Is he in charge? Amen. He is in charge. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you stand with us tonight, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Use your outdoor voice, and, and let's call out to him right now. Lord, we're so thankful. For everybody that's in this building tonight and everybody that's joined us on Facebook Live, we lift you up and praise you. Thank you for allowing us to come together. I, I feel better than I did when I walked into the doors tonight just because my brothers and sisters are here and they are excited to be in your presence. Lord, there's something about us being together that's just encouraging and uplifting. It, it does something to our faith too, Lord. I, I, I've, 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 I've believed all day for you to do some miraculous things, but God, I feel even stronger and I, I'm even more bold right now as we come into your presence and as we lift up these requests because I have people of like faith who I know love and care about me enough to share this burden. Lord, we're encouraged tonight. We're encouraged tonight, not just because we know you can do it, not just because your living word says you can do it, but because you have been doing it. You've been providing power and anointing and glory and healing and deliverance and salvation. God, you've been doing it over and over and over again through Landmark Church. And we're encouraged tonight. We're encouraged as we lift up Vicki and Al Nash and Diane and Sarah, all of them battling with cancer. We're encouraged tonight, Lord, because we know that you are greater than any disease. We know that you are greater than any any affliction. So Lord, we pray right now. We're so thankful for the work that you've already done, but we pray right now. We agree together that you would eradicate this awful disease in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're thankful for the strength and the healing that you've already provided Brandy. Thank you, Lord, for, for keeping her safe. We know there's
There's no logical reason why she should have walked away from the accident the way she did. It was only but by the hand of the Lord, and we're thankful for it. But God, we pray right now that you heal her body completely, touch her mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Lord, we ask tonight that you would touch Stephanie and, and this child that's on the inside of her. We pray, God, in your name that your hands of protection would be wrapped about her. Let her know that you are with her and let her have courage in your strength. Lord, we lift up Laura tonight. We've been praying for her for several weeks, battling with COVID, all kinds of issues, issues with her heart, issues, Lord, with her lungs. But God, tonight we praise you in victory because she's home and her heart's normal. Her lungs are clear. You are a healer. God, we pray in your name. Touch her in a mighty way. Lord, we lift up Brandon Pendergrass tonight, 29 years old, a young man with a young family battling COVID. We know, Lord, that there's no ventilator, there's no doctor, there's no drug, there's no needle, there's no medicine on the face of the earth that can do what your spoken word can do. God, we pray right now in Jesus' name, agreeing with thousands upon thousands of Christians around our area, that you would touch Brandon, that you would take this COVID out of his body. God, we believe you can do it and we believe you can do it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up Doris Schlag tonight, also battling with COVID. Lord, last we heard she was in St. Louis in poor condition. Lord, we pray that you would wrap your arms around her and heal her body from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Let her feel the lightning and the unction of your spirit. God, we were so thankful for the move that David Pulley has been experiencing in his life, the things that he's openly testifying about you doing in and through him. God, we pray in your name tonight that you would honor his faith and touch him completely. The doctors may not understand it, but they don't have to. You created this body. You know it better than any fish physician ever could. Lord, we pray right now that you would heal his lungs, that you would touch his throat. Everything that's wrong, God, heal it in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm thankful for what you've been doing in John Gieselman's life. I'm thankful for the touch that he's felt over the past year. But God, I pray you take him further. Take him deeper. Lord, before you do anything in his body, I pray you continue to call him. Continue to draw him, Lord, in your spirit. Draw him closer to you, we pray in your name. And in that, I pray that you would heal his body in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up Jan tonight. She's a young person, just in her 30s dealing with major heart complications. Lord, we lift her up to you tonight, asking that you would do a mighty, 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 mighty work. Let your unchanging hand reach down into her, caress her heart, heal it, make it everything that it needs to be to operate correctly. In Jesus' name we pray. God, we lift up Ron Houseworth tonight. God, he is no stranger to the move of the Holy Ghost and the power of your spirit, but he's dealing with all kinds of health issues. Lord, I come against every single affliction that he is dealing with. I don't care how great it is. I don't care how small it is. I don't care how much medicine he takes. God, we come against it. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and agree with me right now. In the name that is above every name. God, I pray for a testimony after this service tonight that as we were pray that the presence and the power of God entered into his home and that it wrapped him, itself around him and lifted him up and encouraged him and he could feel the power and the healing virtue of your spirit in Jesus name we pray and Lord all across this building unspoken request represented by the uplifted hand Lord we know we know we know that in and of ourselves we can't deal with it we can't overcome it. We need your strength. We need your deliverance. We need your healing. We need your direction. We need your power. We need your word. We need your encouragement. So right now, Lord, I pray, would you lift that same hand you represented that unspoken request with? Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for every single request that is represented in this place tonight. And I pray that you would disperse angels and power and your spirit right now in the 
name of Jesus. Come on, would you call that need out in Jesus' name? God, you know this is greater than I am. You know this is more powerful than I am. I need you, Lord, to help me right now. In the name of the Lord, let your power fall in every one of these situations. Lord, I also pray tonight that you would help us with patience. Let us be patient with one another. Let us be patient with our family, with our friends, and with our neighbors. And above and beyond anything else, God, I pray that you would help us to truly believe and understand that you are going to, you, no politician, no form of Congress, no new introduction of legislation, but you, God, you're going to heal our nation. You're going to bring us together. We're going to be a Christian nation that lifts you up, magnifies your name, and reaches people for your kingdom. God, in your name, we pray tonight, and we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor tonight. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. If you feel like God has answered any of these prayers tonight, would you just lift him up? God, we praise you in this building. We magnify you across Facebook. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody praise him just for a moment. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lord. Would you clap your hands and shout with a voice of triumph? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Michael. Come we just one more time. Thank him for his goodness. How many feel like would like to just say thank you for this weather? Would you, would you, do you, do you hello? Isn't it nice? Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his blood. Thank him for his mercy. I allow you to be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to uh, speak to us tonight from this title, Confirming Our, in our Inheritance. Right. God bless you. Very familiar scripture, beginning in Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Amen. Is that Jesus calling? We, we welcome you, Jesus. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah. One of the most important questions we can ask. This is the most important question about our life. Right. Where are we going to spend eternity? Can you say amen? amen? I wish that just going to church was enough. I wish that just being a good person was enough. I just wish there's so many other things, but it isn't scripture. Let's look at what the scripture has to say about it. Amen? Amen. Two or three key words in there I want to highlight. The first word lawyer that's translated lawyer, he wasn't in a class action lawsuit attorney. If you like Julia Roberts and Aaron Brockovich, very good movie, but this lawyer wasn't a class action attorney he wasn't in a criminal defense All right. some of you old people like me will remember Perry Mason gonna get an amen, amen. amen. how about an Arnside <laughs> and how about a Matlock <laughs> he's not a divorce I mean he's not a criminal attorney he's not a divorce attorney this man possibly devoted his life to study of the scriptures. He was a lawyer of the Mosaic law. Wow. Spent his life. I've made some errors in studying the scripture. I've been guilty in the past studying the scriptures. Wanting the scriptures to confirm what I believed and thought. I've also wanted the scriptures to confirm the denomination that I was in. And when I got through with most of my denominations, I come to this conclusion. None of them have all the truth. I hope I, I'm not trying to offend anyone. No denomination has all the truth. But as the Lord reveals truth to us, we try to love it. We try to follow it. We try to seek after it. In, in his, he tempted him saying, Master, he tempted him. Right. This man thought he was as sharp as there was. And he had knowledge of the written word of God but he did not know the living word that was standing in front of him. Right. 
it is imperative that we know not just the written word, but the living word. And can you say his name is Jesus? And he's the Lord of my life, and I love him. Hallelujah. This uh, uh, tempted him, and he called him master. In the Greek, there's several words, but that means in the Greek, owner. That means Lord. That means commander. That means overseer. That means teacher. That means doctor, and that means guide. And he didn't say it in the right spirit with the, with the good intentions. He said it in a way tempting our Lord and Savior. But he did ask the most important question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Amen? Amen. I want to look at that word, inherit. Can you say that with me? Inherit eternal life. Inherit it. That means that it's a gift. Does it not? Now, we're talking about inheritance. Let's just stop and pause for just a moment in the natural. How many of you have ever inherited anything? Praise God. Praise God. Inheritance in the natural that we live in is usually comes through two avenues. One of them, it comes through a bloodline. Yeah. comes from your mother, pa- dad, grandparents, someone. That's the most common. And secondly, inheritance is given many times through relationship. And I want us just to keep those two thoughts. In the natural, inheritance comes through the bloodline and most often through relationship. I know there are exceptions. but I want to. And I want us to transition that and look at that in the spiritual. Is there a bloodline in the spiritual? Huh? Let's see what the scripture has to say about it. Revelations 13 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. That's talking about the beast, the false prophet, the son of perdition. In the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. Jesus Christ wasn't a plan to, a plan B. Slain from the very foundation of the world. All of the humanity is going to have to have a bloodline. Can you say amen to that? Yes. Starting with Gen- in Genesis 3.21 with Adam. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skin and clothe them. Why? Because of sin. And those animals were sacrificed and their skin was used for a covering. And here implemented the shedding of blood. Can you say amen? amen. Genesis 4 and 4. And Abel... He also brought of the firstlings of the flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Why? Because there was a blood sacrifice and a bloodline. Amen? Amen. Okay, Exodus 38, I'm not going to read it tonight. It's about Judah, one of the 12 patriarchs. He uh, selected a wife for his uh, oldest son. Beautiful story. If you get a chance to read this, it is amazing, the whole chapter. I won't bore you with it tonight, but I just want to paraphrase it to you in just a moment. He selected a wife named Tamar for his oldest son. His oldest son was evil, and the Lord slew his oldest son. Then he asked his next son, the younger of, of the oldest, to take his brother's wife. He took his brother's wife and slept with her but he would not impregnate her and the Lord slew him and they had one child left if I'm pronouncing it correctly Sheila or something to that effect and apparently he was younger and and Judah asked that she wait till he matured and grew up before she could take him as her husband and it just happened nothing happened nothing transpired And finally, she realized she had lived those years with the widow's garment on, living the widow's life. And she had a plan. Her father-in-law's wife had died. He was out shearing the sheep or with the men shearing the sheep. So she put on a napkin on her face, which was the garment of a prostitute. And when he came by, he decided he wanted the services of this prostitute. But she was very smart. She demanded something of him. She demanded a signet and a couple other items. 
rather than just monetary value. So after that encounter, she became pregnant with her father-in-law. This sounds ridiculous, but I want you to grasp the importance of it. She became pr pregnant by her father-in-law to maintain the bloodline. This is how important there is that there be a bloodline. And when she became pregnant, she went back to where she was, put on a widow garment. She became pregnant with the word got out, and guess what happened? Her father-in-law wanted to have her burnt to death. And whenever he brought those charges and those allegations against her, she produced his signet and some other items that he was the father of the child. Amen. She accepted the embarrassment. She accepted the gossip. She ex accepted the suffering because somewhere in her heart she knew uh, the importance of a bloodline. Yeah. And, we can and, and we could fast forward and, and spend some time. But in, in Matthew 2.16, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. Can you imagine this? And in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Can you imagine the horror, the pain? Trying to stop that bloodline. This bloodline here was Jesus Christ. Right. Amen? Right. <laughs> I love Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. I hope, you, I hope the Lord speaks to you tonight through his precious word. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, speak to every one of us, including myself. Hebrews 9.22 says, Almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. For, and that's for sin. This ceremonial, ceremonially purged is not purged from sin. It was a type and a shadow. No sin was forgiven by the blood of goats and and those sacrifices. Uh, I love that song. What can take away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. How we need a Savior. How we need a Savior that loves us and wants to shed his precious blood for us. The, uh, we've talked about the bloodline. Now I want to introduce a couple of scriptures concerning relationship. Romans 8, 15 through 17. For, we, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. In my first marriage, we tried to adopt a child. It's very difficult. It's very time-consuming. But the beauty of adoption is... Some children are born and not wanted. But nearly all children that are adopted are wanted and prized. Can you say, man, do you know you've been adopted? <laughs> oh, we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Hallelujah. Right. Can I read this in the Message Bible? Oh, yeah. the, this resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? God's Spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really are. We know that who He is, and we know who we are, Father and children. And we know that we're going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. <laughs> we go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with Him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with Him. Amen? Amen? Galatians 4 and 6. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son 
into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. Also, I'd like to read this in the Message Bible. You can tell for sure that you are fully adopted as his own children because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives crying, Papa, Father. Doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you're not a slave but a child? And if you're a child, you're also an heir and with complete access to the inheritance. Back to Luke chapter 10. Just wanted to run those two parallels, the parallel of bloodline and the parallel of relationship, both in the natural and the spiritual. Let's continue with the story. Luke 10, 26. And he said unto him, What's written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, This do, and thou shalt live. He's talking about eternal life. You'll live eternally, our Lord. But he, willing to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? My, my, my. This man erred again. His attitude was wrong. His question was wrong. But I thank God for the truth that's coming out of this. I want you to listen to this word because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. I'm skipping the next two verses because we know the story. The first two people that came upon this man, hurting and wounded and down and out, represented the church of Jesus' day. And the Lord's trying to convey to him how often churches in that time failed and how often we can fail if we don't have the Word of God in our life and a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Because what happens to church, it, it can become a formality. Never about people, only about ourselves. Amen? Yes. And I know you don't want that, and, and I certainly don't want that. I want to finish this race that the Lord Jesus has called me to. I want to finish this course. I certainly want to keep the faith. I must hear, well done. Right. Amen? Yes. Oh, but the priest and the Levite didn't have time. You know, church can keep you busy. Amen? Amen? But a certain Samaritan, a Samaritan, there's only one person hated any more than a Samaritan, and that was a tax collector. But a, Samar a Samaritan was a hated person. It was a person that many despised. Uh, the Bible says that the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. They just didn't want to have anything to do with them. Right. But here was a Samaritan. What, what, what did he do? He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Right. This Samaritan, I tell you what I want. I want a house full of people that have been hurt, that have been despised, that have been disliked, and been discredited. Because God's going to raise up somebody. And they may be the people that are willing to let him raise them up. Amen? So whatever the Lord, I'll, whatever, whatever the Lord wants to send us, and especially people that have been hurt and are still hurting, God send us these people. Yes. Let us be a light to them. Let us be a source of encouragement and hope. Let us be everything you want us to be. Right. Amen. Verse 35. <clears throat> and on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence. Two pence in this is two days wages. For a common laborer. It was also recorded in Exodus chapter 30. That is the ransom money for a life. And we need to realize as his children. As we obey his voice and we follow him. What little we do sometimes may be life saving to other people. Right. They may be so down and out. That there's no way but up as so commonly said. Right. And it may take so little. So little to make a profound change in their life. People respond to, to care, and they respond to compassion, and they respond to being loved, because all of us, all right. whether we're down and out, up and out, or whatever, we need the love of one another as well as the love of God. Amen. Yes. 
which now of these three thinkest thou was neighboring to him that fell among the threes? And he said, He that shewed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Hallelujah. Pretty simple plan, isn't it? It's pretty simple. Love the Lord thy God, all heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And here this man, after his trick questions and after all that he's trying to do to the Lord, he got the right answer. Just go and do likewise. There was still hope for him. Amen? Yes. Acts chapter 2, very familiar scriptures, beginning at verse 36. I just have seen it in a different light as the Lord revealing it. Bear with me tonight. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Well, first of all, the first man's heart wasn't pricked. He was intellectually trying to challenge the Lord of glory. But this man's heart was pricked. His heart was convicted. He knew he needed something that he wasn't capable of doing on his own. Amen? Amen. And he asked Peter, what shall we do? I, I, he was asking about eternal life. Right. Amen? Amen? He's asking about eternal life. What must I do? And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's, it's to everyone. Samaritan, Jew, Gentile, whatever we are. If we Praise God. Right. Now with other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls through a 22-verse message, first-time message from a preacherman. From a fisherman, I said a preacherman, from a fisherman. 22 verses, 3,000 people heard the message, obeyed the message. What happened? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and the breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostle. I love this. And they all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and good and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And one of the most profound sentences there is in the Bible, and the Lord added daily, to the church such as should be saved. I, the Lord showed me something I hadn't seen before, a very familiar scripture. Peter's profound preaching, anointed of the Holy Ghost, had a harvest of 3,000 souls. They were introduced to the love of God. These people were. We don't have their name. We don't know nothing about them. But they let the love of God that they had received flow through them. Huh? And they went out and they loved their neighbor. Yes. And if we want to see God complete his work in our community, we've got to let the love of God flow through all of us yes. and truly love our neighbor as ourself. Yes. There's been a word been given to this body defining love in our neighbor. It's when we, when we, our brother's need has priority over our wants. Amen? Another familiar scripture, Acts chapter 10, 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. These, this was the Gentile conversion. We that are Gentiles were brought in. For they heard them, verse 46, and they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay. The gift of the Spirit to the Jew, to the half-Jew, to the Gentile. Here it is. Here's the point I want to make. The Holy Ghost is more than just speaking in tongues. Yeah. That's right. The Holy Ghost is much more than just feeling good. But it's wonderful. It's wonderful. But it's more than that. 
what we need to do and what I need to do, and I'm including myself, we just need to let the Holy Ghost flow through us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Just let it flow through us. There's no place that the Holy Ghost is forbidden. So often we just allow the Spirit to move through us, mainly in our local assembly. God wants more than that. He wants us to let it flow on the job in a confrontational situation. Can you, boy, I got some amens out of that. In the problem part of the day, wherever we are, the Holy Ghost is wanting to flow through us. But what's the purpose of all? It's much more than just me feeling good. I want to share a couple of things that we could spend all night, but just a couple of things. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken you, quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And that word quicken in the Greek just means to make alive. I don't know about you, but when I was filled with the Holy Ghost, I felt a newness of life that I had never felt before. Yeah. I hope you have too. And I found out there, there needs to be many refillings in my life. The infilling of the Holy Ghost isn't a one-time, one-event experience. Right. Right. Huh? That's right. oh, isn't it beautiful that he wants to do it? So we have the purpose, that spirit is to, is to resurrect us. Yeah. It's the power of resurrection which is the power of life. Amen? Ephesians 1, 13, chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Hello? Sealed. Verse 14. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. Hmm. My last mortgage that I went through a financial institution on, I want to talk to you about earnest. Michael could probably tell us a lot better than me. The last home mortgage that soon I went to get we had to have earnest money. Are any of you old folks out there know what earnest money is? I had to have 20% in cash of what I was borrowing. Now, I understand to buy this property. Now, I understand banking has changed, and, and uh, you don't have may, may, maybe necessarily have to have the down payment. But back then, I had to have 20% of my own money down to purchase this property that I wanted. That's called earnest money. But it's, it, but it's very binding. When I paid that earnest money, it was part of the purchase price, and it was money given in advance as security for the rest. Now, this Holy Ghost that, in the, uh, that is in us has been paid by our Lord, yeah. purchased by his blood, yeah. that we may have eternal life with him. Yeah. It's resurrection power. It's joy, it's peace, it's hope, unlimited, yeah. but it's also a down payment's been paid for you. Yeah. Right. That's what his blood did and his spirit. Yeah. He's invested in all of us. Yeah. And I want to tell you something. He can use any one of us to sell, tell somebody with the anointing of the spirit yeah. about the love of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And when his spirit is flowing through us, we won't be condemning. We won't be looking for others' faults. Yeah. We'll just be looking for some way to share Jesus Christ with them. Yeah. And if we want to see in the Lord added daily, that don't come from the pulpit ministry. That comes from people. And I want to be one of the people, too, as well as in the pulpit. Yeah. I, want, I want to see the love for the neighbor defined in all of our lives. Yeah. We won't have to be like the, and who is my neighbor? Oh, God, let us just open up our lives and open up our hearts and let the power of God work through us. He don't, aren't you thankful for some of us? He don't require intelligence, and I include me in that. Anyone can relate a story of the love of Christ. Huh. Huh. 
it has pr profound power and effect. Amen? I'm looking for the Lord to send us people that desperately need him. And this body will be able to meet their spiritual need by presenting to them a Jesus Christ that they can see, that they can experience, and they can relate with. Pastor Michael? Anybody thankful for what God has done in your life? I think one of the most revealing parts of that to me tonight was um, when Pastor David was alluding to the, the reality that uh, part of the, inher the inheritance doesn't stop with us. I mean, the story when you consider Tamar and what she went through, she understood how critical it was not just to be part of that family, uh, not just to be one of the relatives that was identified with that last name, but also that she was instrumental in making sure that that, that particular family carried on, that she was birthing somebody else through what she had inherited. How powerful is that? It's, it's not, it doesn't end with us. It goes beyond us. When we understand that what, what God has given to us and part of our, our play throughout this entire journey and relationship that we have with God, it's, it's, it's not just about reception. Brother Chris, it's not just about what God gives to us and what we can inherit. Can inherit. We, don't, we, we shouldn't just be standing around with our arms out saying, gimme, 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 gimme. Right? Relationship, that stuff just is supposed to happen. We give because we, we love one another. Right? We give and we, we do those kinds of things because we love one another. But in reality, the goal from God is to take what he's given to us through relationship and share that with other people. It shouldn't stop with us. Peter, what would have happened if Peter would have stopped? If he would have said, all right, I, the fire came in, uh, in the upper room and I, I've got all I need. See you later. What would have happened? <laughs> it, it, our, the whole dynamic of everything that we believe and feel and experience and see today, it would be, it would be changed. Peter and John, when they were on the way to the temple, such as I have, give I thee. Part of what our responsibility is to take that inheritance of what God has given to us and make sure that, that other people know you can have this too. Such as I have, give I unto thee. I don't know, I don't know if he gave it at the beginning, but I, I wrote it down. His title tonight was Confirming Our Inheritance. What a powerful thought. What a powerful thought. Not just, not just who we are in Christ and what our relationship between he and I is, but also what are we to other people for Christ. Just a very, very powerful thought. I, I'd encourage you to stand with us tonight, and uh, I want us to pray that God would help us. You know, the, the, the reality is we in, in the church world, we, it's very easy. Well, let me just say for me, it is very easy to become comfortable and complacent and all of those things in what we're doing together. It's very easy for me to get wrapped up in our relationship and what's going on in this church and forget that God has commissioned us to go ye therefore into the, all the world. Amen? It, 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 it needs to be, we need to be reminded that we are on a mission here and that it goes beyond the four walls of this church and us coming together and singing the right song and saying praise the Lord and, and never taking it outside of these doors. It goes beyond that. We're supposed to carry it with us everywhere. Would you pray tonight and let's ask God to make us a soul winning station. Can we do that? Can we do that tonight? Lord, we're so thankful for your word. God, your word is truly sharper than any two-edged sword. And we're so thankful, Lord, that, that when we come and, and experience, we open your word and we experience the call of your word, that you just start cutting things away and remind us of who we are, whose we are, and where we need to be. God, I pray tonight that you would help us to be conscious of the inheritance we have access to because of the sacrifice that you made on Calvary's hill. I pray that you would help us to understand that we aren't entitled to this. This isn't something we deserve. But we have access through a relationship with you. A path that you've made available. 
God, don't allow us to, to take grace for granted and excuse ourselves from the call to be your pride. But let us embrace relationship and intimacy with you to grow the depths of our beings. For there, in that moment, in that position, we find our relationship that, that, that positions us in a place to receive our inheritance. We, we don't receive God because we, we've done some, something great. We, we receive because you are great. We receive because you loved us first. God, I pray that you would embolden desire for more of you in every single one of us tonight. Embolden the desire in our hearts and our minds, our souls, in our spirits. Let us live out the scripture to love the Lord our God with all our heart mind, soul, and strength. I pray, Lord, that it would be just unbridled. It would be uncontrollable. Let something get out on the inside of us that is just pushing us toward deeper relationship with you uncontrollably, burning out of control, understanding that it is your will for us to be recipients of your blessing, your goodness, and the promise of eternal life with you. God, don't let us get caught up in the cares of life and day to day and neglect our relationship with you, but let us get caught up, consumed, and lost in you and who we are in relationship with you. And let us be a beacon of hope above and beyond anything else, God. Let us be a beacon of hope to everybody that's around us. I believe if we truly understand, God, if we truly understand fully our inheritance, that we will understand, that we will know that it is our duty to reproduce. God, it, it is not your will that we hold on to this. It's not, it's not your will that we keep this to ourselves, but it is your will that we reproduce and we freely give. The bloodline must continue, God, and it is our responsibility to continue it. Help Landmark Church, every single person under the sound of my voice, whether they're in this building live or across Facebook, help us, I pray. Help us, I pray, to accept that call to relationship and be willing, Lord, to do everything that you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Is anybody thankful that God has given you this opportunity tonight? I don't know. I don't deserve it. There's nothing I've done that, that, that causes me to deserve this. Lord, it's only by your grace, and we praise you tonight. God, we're so thankful that you've allowed us to be a part of this, to have this kind of scripture and to have this information, to have these things revealed to us. God, we are thankful. Lord, in our situation, in our dark hour, in our time of turmoil and distress, we're thankful, Lord, that you came down and pulled us out and you made ways where there seemed to be no way. You are worthy tonight, Lord. You are worthy tonight, Lord. God, we're undeserving and we're not holy. And Lord, we're, the Bible says we're as filthy rags, but by your grace we have, made, we have been made worthy. By your grace we have been made holy and by your grace we have an opportunity to know you in a deeper walk, in a deeper relationship. We bless your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful tonight that God has allowed you, not your brother, your sister, but has allowed you to come in contact with him and receive what you've received in your life? Isn't God good? Praise the name of the Lord. I wonder if we could clap our hands to the Lord one more time. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor David, what an excellent word. Thank you for sharing your heart. Thank you for sharing your heart with us tonight. Facebook, we love you so much. We appreciate you. God bless you. We will see you on Sunday. Somebody say praise the Lord.